Welcome to the Bishop Nation Talk Show for our very first edition. I am William R. Bowie III, and I will introduce to you the world's greatest entrepreneur, businessman, and politician, my main man, the Bishop. How are you doing this evening, sir? I'm better than I have been, but not as good as I'm going to get. Well, you know, the way this thing works is I know about you because you're my best friend. Um, you're a person who I've learned so much about the business world about. But I want to introduce you to the world. I want to be the person who introduces you to the world. Tell us about yourself. Okay, well, my background begins in the labor movement. Um, I spent a lot of time uh, with the labor unions from, from, the, from I guess, 19... Uh, 80 uh, to the present. Uh, that's why that's why I began my start, and I started learning about labor law and law in general. At that point, um, I jumped off in entrepreneurship. Uh, the reason I had to jump off in entrepreneurship is because, you know, when you're dealing with labor and management issues, mm -hmm. those, those struggles help build you and build your character. But we had a labor management issue, and then, you know, of course, management went after me, and then at that point, I had to turn the scenario around. You know, of course, you know, they fired me. And, and of course, everybody should know by now, and I'm the comeback kid. Okay, okay, okay. okay so, that, so, that, you were, so you were basically in the process of basically turning a, 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 a negative situation to a positive situation. Exactly, and, exactly. And, and, and that worked out. Right. Okay, and then, and then um, at the point when that happened, I was the vice president of the union, you know, asked me to look before 22, and then I became the president from... 92 through 2009 and okay. then i moved over into the court workers uh and became an executive director of the maryland state court employees for uh district and circuit statewide which i'm currently holding that position looking out for those individuals as well so it's fair to say you know everybody i know everybody right yeah. and you've also run for political office we and gotta talk about that yeah we gotta talk about that 44b um, right 44b 44b um you know, 44, you know, that was the 40, 44, you know, was, was Obama's number. So, it, it, you know, I was glad that they, they kind of reassigned the district what, to What was it before? Days. Was it the 10th? Yeah, it was the 10th district. Ah, uh, you didn't think was, I remember. Yeah, I know you should yeah, remember. I remember, I remember, it, I remember it, it my, the 10th my, district. My, my legislative yeah. political district. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the 10th district. So, uh, you know, when they went through the scenario of basically saying we're going to redesign it, you know, and they made it from 10th to the 44B. Of course, you know, you know, me, me being an entrepreneur and caring about the people, and my slogan is uh, Bishop stands for Bold, Innovative Servant, Helping to Organize People, you know, 44B. Right. Okay. Right. And when's the next election so we all know? Well, the next election is, is 2022. Okay. okay. And I take it you're running. Absolutely. I, it, it would not be an election if I wasn't running. Yeah, I, I, well, you know, you told me that. You told yeah. me about that. There's, there's, see, people got in, get into this thing about, okay, whether somebody wins an election or loses an election. Mm -hmm. How about this? There's no such thing as failure, and they need to take failure out the dictionary. Well, I think you're right. In terms of, I've, I've, we've had a chance to watch over this past year or so, people theoretically who have lost an election, but they seem like they had a big political boost. Exactly. And I'm thinking about the lady that ran for election in Georgia. I don't know her name. And now she's head of uh, basically like a get out the vote or to make voting fair. And I saw her on all of these national programs over the weekend. I, and I thought to myself, wow, theoretically she lost an election, but it looks like she won one. At least the election of political opinion. Let's say that. Exactly. And you gain more uh, momentum. You gain more strength. You build up your political power base. You build up your, your, your opportunity to get things done for the people. Because Martin Luther King said something that was very, very uh, prominent. Is that it's us that have the most that have to look out for those who have the least. And we have to do that because we have the ability to take the most chances. Everybody can't have, take chances and, have, and, and deal with uh, their risk scenario. Right. Because so, they could fall off the cliff. So it sounds like you definitely believe in terms of giving back to the community. Exactly. You got to give back to the community. I mean, you can't walk through this earth without, without lifting people up while you're walking through the earth. Right. Right. As we're walking through our journey. Right. So, so to explain your journey to others, wouldn't you say the ability to be able to go out and earn money on your own, 
through, through being an entrepreneur has been an important part of that. It's been a very important part of it because let, let me start out with this. The scenario is this, is that, okay, when you become an entrepreneur, you become the boss. So when you become the boss, that means that you're not going to fire yourself and you don't have to worry about being unemployed. That's true. That's okay. true. It's very true. So, so that's the first part of it. The other part of it is an entrepreneur who is dedicated to the, making their own self-determination and, and making sure that, that they're going to eat tomorrow and make sure that they employ people that can eat tomorrow. All those are the catalysts to put together to make the whole entrepreneurship work. Right. We, we got to be in a, in a situation where, where we can create independence continuously but, but what about all of these people they say you know bishop i've had a rough life I, I got dealt a really bad set of cards in terms of my life and i'm struggling and it's difficult for me to be successful no and I, I'm, and, I, and i would let's say for those people who are out there who consider themselves underemployed okay well what i would say to them is listen there's 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 no such thing as that you not being able to start over again and this is something that you and I have had discussions about, um, you know, in, uh, in other, other venues. Is that, okay, say you had an unfortunate circumstances. Okay, so that does not mean that you can't go get a license and go do something. That does not mean that you well, can't. Well, what if I say to you, Bishop, I was, I was convicted of armed robbery. And I can't get employment because of my felony criminal conviction. Okay. And I'm having a difficulty in getting licensing because okay. of my felony criminal conviction. What would you what would you say to that person? Well, what I would say to that as person as a community leader. At, what I would say to that right. person is to start out with the basics. The basics would be is to go get into an entrepreneurship and a product and a service that doesn't require a license. Okay. Okay. You know, you can go down to the courthouse, you can go to the clerk of the court in any jurisdiction. Get a basic license. You get a basic business license. Find a product or service to, to get into business. Now, if you want to get into other stuff that require license, okay, so you got to go to... more specialized license. Well, I would say you would have to go to William R. Boyd III and, and have him navigate to you, see if you can get rid of that so you can make that leap. Right. Well, okay. let's say I can get the license. I'm telling you, I'm disadvantaged. I got dealt a bad set of cards. I don't have any money. Okay. I live in a capitalistic society, but I don't have any capital. Okay, but check this out. When you decide you want to deal with a product and service, whatever the revenue that's coming through, or residual, whatever, you need to take that money and create your own bank. Okay. So cut out all that crazy stuff that you do. Create your own bank. Become your own ATM machine. And recycle that money and build that money up. That's the same thing that the banks do. So why you can't do it? Don't be making no excuses. So let me ask you this question. Man. Would you say that many people who are not successful are just excuse makers? Well, I think they're excuse makers when they don't understand that they have to believe in their dream and they, and they have to initially finance their own dream. What if I tell you I'm angry? I don't believe I'm part of America. I don't like America. I'm ready to go to the next country. You right. I, I heard somebody come in my office and say that this week. Right. They said, I'm tired of America. I want to go to another country. And you okay. know, I was thinking, you know what I said, right? Where? <laughs> well, you know what I say? Where are you going to go? I understand that America got their own issues. So as I went to Cuba for three days, I was yeah. crying to come back home. I, first thing, I was hungry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Food was terrible. Yeah, yeah. I don't care how anybody feels about it either. Right. Cigars but, were wonderful. Food yeah. was terrible. Yeah. But I, I would say this. I would say, I would say, look, America is still the greatest country in the world. Yes, we have our wild issues going on about how America's going to work. And, and we've had that going on since the inception of America. Okay. But it's still the country of possibilities and dreams that you make your dreams come true. So you can't abandon that because you're having a rough time. Whatever. So once you had a rough time. I mean, I just throw it out to you because I hear a lot of people say that they can't figure out how to become successful in America. And then I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I look at I look at me. Sometimes I look at you. And I think we're, we've come from, from rather normal backgrounds. Humble, humble yeah, beginners. Very humble. 
Yeah, yeah, we were born <laughs> you know, into the world. You, you had we, were into the, we were born into the world a big piece of humble pie. You exactly. Know what I mean? you, you, had, you, had, you had a, you know. Wonderful You mother. had a wonderful mother, mother Christine Bowie. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, your father. Okay. But that's know. the exception. What if I didn't have a father? Okay. Well, let me let me let me go through that for, for so a I second. I think I was an advantage. I think having having a dad you, was. You an had advantage. a good advantage. I so. just before we came here to take this today, my father was at my office. Okay. He just right there with me, just the whole time. I'm here with you, so son. I'm your I'm your, I'm, your, I'm, your, I'm your father. I'm, I'm, I'm holding it down. Yeah. You need anything? Yeah. You need anything? So yeah. I think that was an advantage. Is that now? I came from a different scenario. Okay. So you know, and and you know. I'm glad that we met each other. You know, you lived um, over there, uh, you know, by Morgan. Yeah, okay. Northeast Baltimore. North, Northeast Baltimore. And, and believe it or not, boy, um, I, I, I was um, living not too far from you. So it was kind of fate that we got together later on. Eventually, yeah. Okay, so because I lived on 743 East Coast Spring Lane. Yeah, up street. Right over the hill. I don't, okay. I don't know where it's at. So at that point, you know, my, my parents um, um, broke up. Okay, they decided they didn't want to be together anymore. And then my grandmother, who was a minister, you know, she took me. Okay, and then I became kind of like the community child. So uh, I, I went to, you know, aunt to uncle, and you know, all over the place. So, so, so what if, so what if somebody says, well, you're black, relatively poor family, uh, and a lot of, you know, a whole bunch of circumstances. When we come back from my break, I want to hear how you got out of this particular. Uh, well, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna I want to hear. I want to know how the bishop became the bishop. I want. I'm gonna lay it out to you systematically. All right, we're gonna have a blueprint for you when we get back. See you in a minute. We're now here at Central Brooklyn, so you can see the person that's been released from home detention. Come free at last, free at last. Thank God, he's free, free at last. Jesus Christ. Hold detention. Freedom ain't free. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want mass incarceration. Must come to an end. Must come to an end. Free at last. Free, free at last. last. Thank God, God Almighty. We are free, free at last. last. Jesus Christ. Christ. Hold detention. You've got to make a choice. Do you want to live or do you want to die? Because it's your health that is your true wealth. You've got to invest. In Bowie Black Seed Oil, Bowie Black Seed Honey. For blood pressure, for sugar intake, for weight loss, and even for pain and inflammation. You've got to make a choice. Do you want to live or do you want to die? So now we're ready for the blueprint. We're back. We're trying to hear how you you come out of this situation. Uh, black, underprivileged, and oppressed. And what is the blueprint? Blueprint for becoming successful in America. The the blueprint is this: is that you cannot give up under any circumstances. So, the first thing that people need to understand is this: never, never, never give up. And that's just how it's going to have to be. And you have to press on. Now we all live in life, and we're going to have obstacles. The goal is to get over those obstacles. We got to get over those obstacles. If we don't, then okay, we just, we just, we just in a standstill. We frozen. So in life, you can't freeze. You can't freeze. Okay? If you freeze, then nothing happens. And nothing's going to happen unless you do something about it. That's the way the world really works. Okay? And, and, and boy, to your concept, you know, about, you know, um, and I, we talk about this all the time: is, is, is think, think, you know, think rich and you know how to get rich in America, um, and and that's a book that everybody should read. Okay, um, they should take some time to do that, and they also need to. Everybody has a talent. Now, whether they discover the talent or not is something <coughs> totally different. But if they do have a talent, they need to discover that talent and monopolize on that talent, and they need to take that talent to the marketplace. If you look at most entrepreneurs in America, they was able to take that talent and that product and service to the marketplace. And you got to be around some positive people too, right? To be able to tell you that hey, this is something that you really do well, and maybe you should focus on it. Exactly. And I think my best example with you was on the pest control because I don't think anybody does pest control better than you. And then you came up with this, you know, Bishop Barry pest control. You got pests. Rats and roaches that look real scary? Call your solution. I'm 
Bishop Byrne. If you got bugs, mice, or fleas, Bishop Byrne will bring them to their knees. There ain't no bug I can't get out. The price is so good, it's gonna make you shout. No more pests and no more scary. When you call me, he's Bishop Byrne. Eradicate those bugs with Bishop Barry Bug Scrunching Whole House $99 Special. No more pests and no more scary. When you call me, he's Bishop Byrne. Well, thank you very much, sir. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you yeah. keep it straight. You and, keep it straight. And, and, and I love pest control because pest control helps helps humanity. Um, uh, because um, pest control, like, say, for instance, roaches and stuff, they cause kids asthma. Mm-hmm. So it's a health concern. It's a health concern. It really is a health concern. And you can't be living with pests and 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 have a, a good life. Well, so, I'm gonna tell you one thing. I don't know how we slipped over the pest that fast, <laughs> but with the bed bug, bed bugs epidemic and everything else, oh my God. it's become a real health issue. It's a real health issue. But but one thing I like about you is that you you never you always seem to be an upbeat person and you're not discouraged. And I've watched you you really 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 climb to some really great heights by being a positive person. That whole think and grow rich Napoleon Hill mentality, you've been able to really epitomize that and move forward in life and become a successful capitalist person here. Yeah, but boy, you know, um I I understand that um the cold concept of being able to to be successful is is that you have to self motivate yourself. You really got to get up in the morning and say, okay, all right, I'm a human being. I have to contribute to society. Guess what? Ain't nothing in my hand. I got to make something happen. Right. And the reason I got to make something happen is that I have to have food, clothing, and shelter. And I have to provide food, clothing, and shelter for the people that I love. Because you got to put the points on the board every day. You do. And if you're not willing to do that, then, you know, yeah. Don't don't show up. You know, one of the greatest do- uh, basketball players of all time told me, Dr. J, I had the, uh, the very great fortune in going to his basketball camp in 1982. Okay. And I think my mother had had the foresight to see that it, but he would be a great influence on me. Right. He said when he put two points in the board when he played basketball for the Philadelphia 76ers, he looked at it like he was earning money. He was putting food in the mouths of his children. Right. And I think that, you know, it was interesting to hear a basketball player say that. Because it, it's a different type of way to earn a living. Exactly. But nonetheless, a way to earn a living. Exactly. So one of the things that I know I wanted to see if I could pick your brain and then extract from you during the Bishop Nation talk show is how can people of color be successful in America? Because we're in a time where there's a lot of racial uh, uh, issues. And we're at a crossroads to say, hey, we understand the problems. What about the solution? I watch talk shows every night. You know, how they call them the talking heads. Mm-hmm. But what, what, I want to hear solutions. You've been a solution problem solver. Well, you know, another thing, boy, is that you and I also um, had the, the foresight and the ingenuity to talk about how do you rebrand um, African American people. Mm. Okay. Mm. So you pulled that one out. You pulled that one out. The, the attaché. The briefcase. Oh, 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 I'm ready. Yes, you did. Okay. I, was, I was born ready. Yes, you did. Okay. Yes, you did. So, so we have to rebrand um, African American community because African American community does have a bad brand. Ooh, and, and, ooh, and what I, and ooh, when ooh, I say ooh, that, we get I mean, somewhere tonight. Yeah, I mean, when I you say that, somewhere. I mean, I don't mean that they, all of us do. I'm saying the segment of com, of the community where where society has says that we worthless and, and we need to throw them people away, that they've characterized them as having a bad brain. Well, let's, let's, now, let's, now, let me finish. Okay. So, no, we have a lot of community people, business people who are successful and have a lot to contribute to society and have done it throughout the years. But there's 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 a scenario there's a there's a scenario going on, and they got a, they got some of the disadvantaged people in a box, and they said, well these people's workers we can throw them away we can lock them up we can throw them away. Right. All right. So. And if we need somebody to replace them, we got somebody to replace them. Right. We can figure out a way right. that a computer or robot will do that job. Right. Or artificial intelligence. That's what we're gonna use. And we gotta get away from. Because we're gonna do a separate show on artificial intelligence. Exactly. I think that's one of the sleeping issues. Exactly. Getting locked out is as bad as getting locked up. Either way, you're on the wrong side of the door.
When that happens to you, call Bishop Barry Locksmith, the main man with the locksmith plan. Praise the Lord, we're on the right side of the door. Bishop Barry Locksmith, 410-292-3029. 410-292-3029. Bishop Barry does business. Praise the Lord. The hardest working part of your body is your feet. And if you don't take care of them, they won't take care of you. Unhappy, unhealthy feet look like this. And when your feet look like this, you feel like this. Left untreated, serious medical foot problems like athlete's foot can cause agony and pain. Sassy grass for women and sportsmen for men. Specially formulated exfoliants to instantly, soothingly get rid of athlete's feet and other foot problems. Call 1-855-NIGELLA. Your feet will thank you. Those okay. kids know everything. All right, okay, everything. all right. Well, let me let, let, let me let me let me um, qualify my remarks. I ain't got no bank. Matter of fact, I'll okay. tell you specifically how much money I got right now. I live. I'm I'm 20 years. I'm, I'm African American male. I'm 20 years of age. Okay. Um, I didn't graduate from high school. I don't have my GED. I went to the 11th grade. I have a prior conviction for possession with intent to distribute narcotics. Um, I just got off. I just got out of prison. Well, I'm on probation. Wow, when I want to make it America. Tell okay, me how to okay, do it. Okay, so so okay, so now you have all of these things you saying that's negative. So what what can you do to make it positive? First of all, you gotta get out of this mindset that I'm a victim. Oh, oh, oh there we go. Oh, now oh, we get somewhere. Oh, oh, I'm a victim. Now we get somewhere. Oh, oh, oh society has oppressed me because I'm a victim. Oh really? So you get up every day and you breathe, right? You breathe H two O. HCO is going in your lungs where you can exhale and inhale. All right, so now we start with the fact that everybody has a, a circle influence. Okay? I just got out of prison. Everybody I know just uh, got out of prison. All right, okay. Everybody got a circle influence. They sell drugs. Right, they so, give me some drugs. I'm right, talking about so, something legal. So, so, okay, legal. Legal. Okay, so. Something I won't go to jail everybody, for everybody, the next everybody, day. Everybody got a circle influence. Okay, so, you know, when you get out of jail. The first income they give you is something to go, you know, get out of jail with. Okay. $50 and all a, right, and a right, bus token right, to get right, back to Baltimore. All right, well, check this out. $25 of that need to go on the side. You just can't go spend the $50. What if I need the whole $50 to get all my right. bus ticket to get from the Eastern Shore back to Baltimore? Right, well, check this out. When you get back to Baltimore, check this out. Now I'm at my mama house. There's, there's services that, 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 you know, that deal with re-entry of there ex-offenders. There you go. There so, you go. so you got to you got to go. go out and and, go. and and deal with interacting with those services so. because I mean you got to start from somewhere, and then at that point they start trying to use the channel communication to start <coughs> excuse me integrating yourself into society where you can basically start you know taking care of your lifestyle, finding housing. So that's one of the things that, that and, you can and do. And find employment. So that's one of the things you can focus on for 44B. Exactly. Be prisoner reentry. Exactly, because a lot of times think, people think that because um, certainly, you know, 44B is, I guess I would say it's, it's a good community, but, I mean, you and I they, talked about this 44B. They got some people getting out of prison in 44B. They got some people getting out of prison in 44B. I know. And, and the and, police is running up and down Liberty Road. And they got some people that are very well off. It's a very diverse community. It's, it's a very diverse community. Very diverse community. Right. And, and we got to be able to, to deal with the stuff that people need. Right. So when we come back, we're going to talk about some more political initiatives that you will have for 44B and the state of Maryland that will help get our people back on track. We'll be back in a few minutes. Getting locked out is as bad as getting locked up. Either way, you're on the wrong side of the door. When that happens to you, call Bishop Barry Locksmith, the main man with the locksmith plan. Praise the Lord, we're on the right side of the door. Bishop Barry Locksmith, 410-292-3029. 410-292-3029. Bishop Barry does business. Praise the Lord. Welcome back. Yeah. And thank you for staying with us here at the uh, Bishop Nation Talk Show. What we're talking about are ways to get the community on track. We just simply talked about prison reentry, which I think is an excellent way to start. Mm -hmm. And besides prison entry, the other thing you mentioned was loans. And, it's, well, the, and I'm going to throw something out to you. There's yeah. a new concept in lending called micro loans, which are where you give small loans to people. Not necessarily the big loans that we think about all the time, but small loans that use in these third world countries. And no offense for third world countries, but this certainly could be used in the minority community. 
where you have a loan for a thousand or two thousand, exactly. so people could get that little boost that they needed. What do you think about that concept of lending? Well, I, I think it's a great concept of lending because um, you know the way the whole credit situation is, is established, you got to start from somewhere. So, so you need those micro loans to build up your credit so that you can you can go do other things. Point. Right. So right, the micro right, loan right, will right. make you go from A B to Z. Right. So that when when you when you accomplish that, and yes, you got to pay back the loan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you got to pay back the loan. You yeah. can't be defaulting on a loan and thinking uh, the, ra the rainbow is going to come at the well, other end of the rainbow. You can't think the loan is a gift. Oh, the loan's not a gift. You got to pay it back. Yes. Yeah, you got to pay but, it back. But one way you could do for the micro loans, you could put people in a situation where once the loan is paid back, they would be able to go back and borrow more exactly. as an incentive to get the micro loan paid back. Exactly. And maybe even force people to give, not a long one, but a little short business plan so you'd have some idea and insurance of what they would be using the money for. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that would maybe even be a good piece of legislation to, oh, if yeah. possible, I don't know if you could do it on the state and local level to force, well, to well, force I, them, or you could do it just simply as a politician to encourage lending institutions to be able to get in that in your community in 44B. Well, how you do that is you say, well, okay, so I need you to empower 44B. Okay, and I'm not suggesting in any shape or form that it shouldn't be statewide, but I'm saying, okay. It'd be a great program statewide. And, and the stress communities or semi-stressed communities, you need the micro loans to build the people up. So 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 the, the state legislation legislation that I would introduce would have to be part of what we call a lift. We gotta lift the people. I, you mean, know, I like that. I mean we we, we I make, like that. Let me tell you what we're doing. I like okay, that. So, you, you said so something to me tonight. We, we gotta, I like that. We gotta lift them. Okay, so you know, we could call them you know how they had empowerment zones, we could right. call them lift zones. Lift zones. Ooh. But not only that is okay so they I mean if you lift the people, guess what? The state is getting revenue off of lifting the people. It's not like it's not a, a, a scenario where, okay, it's not a win-win. It's a win-win. The state lift the people, check us out. Lift the people, the state win, the state get taxes off of lifting the people. And you know what they could also provide people in these lift zones? There could be some type of, at least, a, a coupon to be able to use for a class. Exactly. A basic entrepreneur class. Yes. And, and, you know, boy, that's something that, um, you know, entrepreneurs like ourselves... I think that, that we are in a great position to, to, to create a series of how to become an entrepreneur and, I mean, spin it off into um, videos, spin it off into CDs. But that's because, what we're doing now. That's because, why on the Bishop right. Talk Show, I wanted to have the opportunity to pick your brain and to be able to show what a great entrepreneur you are and to be able to teach people how to do it. That's what, but that's you, what the Bishop Clark Shows too. I'm, I'm, well, well, I'm, I'm going to put my two cents in here, credit. but I want to make sure that the people are able to extract this knowledge that you have the offer to teach them to how, so they can be the best people that they can be. Thank you for joining us, and we'll be back next time at the Bishop Nation. Be your best self. <laughs>